Pick up your gear and open your chests. Throw on your armor and head out on a quest. Hey, hey, it's a brand new day. On the Sword Coast, the allies will help with blades and bows and magic as well. Hey, hey, he was on their way. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. Idle champions of the forgotten realms. Idle champions, adventure never ends. Idle champions, did you want a man? Idle champions, you were said again. Idle champions. From water deep to ice and air, head out the shelf, all shadow fell. Hey, hey, together we stay. Walk to the monsters, walk to the boss, walk to the right. It's never a loss. Hey, hey, bad guys to slay. Fighting forever against overwhelming odds. Fighting together in favor of multiple gods. I don't champions of the forgotten realms. I don't champions that you never realms. I don't champions that you want to dance. I don't champions you will say it again. I don't champions. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Gar Wars Guide, the tutorial show. I am the Garwar mentioned in the title. Uh, with me today is Jay, moderating uh, and grabbing questions from the chat. Today, we will be talking uh, about uh, the very first topic we ever talked about in tutorial shows. Way back... Uh, in like September of 2020, which feels like it wasn't that long ago, I, I and yet it, it was. Uh, we're going to talk multi-party and Modron automation. Uh, yeah, that was the first ever tutorial show. That was the first ever tutorial show. And you know, with the uh, recent stream announcement that uh, that this coming Wednesday we will be getting, uh, well, first with the recent just announcement that this coming Wednesday, we're finally getting a Modron champion, Nordom, coming to Idol Champions Wednesday. Uh, but then also the stream announcement that we're also going to get a new Modron core, a magic core, mm -hmm. uh, and another party, a fourth party, all via Split the Party 3. Uh, I figured, hey, it's probably a good time. It's probably a good time to talk about multi-party and, and Modrons for people. For people. Uh, oh, geez, okay. Sorry. Okay. Now we're caught up. Housekeeping stuff, folks. Uh, so if we're going to talk about that, I'm going to talk about uh, quite a bit of that. We may even... We may even, depending on how much time we have, we may even talk a little bit about Modron flow, like just a little bit, so you know, you know how to get your flow going when you get your Modron core uh, and what you're looking for. We may even prep a little bit of that. May even do a little bit of that today. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, so the way this show works, if you've never been to this show before, we've had lots of new people coming in the last couple of weeks. So if you've never been to a tutorial show before, uh, welcome. Uh, but the way this works is I talk on the topic for about an hour, uh, so that in the future, when this is uploaded to the, the YouTube, 
account of CNE Games uh, that people can just tune in and get information, uh, uh, you know, about the topic and then bounce if they don't want to, you know, if they don't want to hear the Q and A stuff. But in the second hour, we'll do Q and A, um, and I will I will answer uh, stuff. I will do the Q and A questions that are that are on related like to the topic first, and then we'll go into general stuff after that. And we'll go into general stuff after that. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, and that includes, you know, and anything you want to talk about, uh, in, in terms of the game, uh, that I can assist you with. Keep in mind, I am not a developer of the game. I am not a full-time employee of CNE. They, they bring me in to do these shows because, uh, I've been writing guides about the game to explain, uh, uh how to, how to play the game and, and, and hopefully make your time in the game more enjoyable for like four and a half years. So... After two and a half years, they were like, hey, why don't you stream on our channel and, and do this stuff? And, and I was like, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not doing anything else. Uh, so, let's dive in. Uh, as you can see, uh, my party is, is doing Modron Automation stuff in the background right now. Uh, you may not have noticed, but it's, it would, it's, it's like set up with times it's gotten, there's numbers, there's lights and colors and, and stuff. And if you don't know what any of that means, uh, you're, you're about to find out. You're about to find out. Uh, so, uh, these are, are a lot of people, uh, confuse, uh, Modron stuff and multi-party, uh, with the same things. Like they think, well, that's, that's just. That's the same stuff, Garwar. Like, that's... They're interconnected, right? Mm, not really. Uh, uh, Multi-party mode uh, is effectively just this this mode right here where you see uh, I have named my party's gem farm active, gem farm background, and another gem farm background if you want to know what I do with my, with my multi-parties when I use them. Uh, everybody has the different things they want to do. Everybody can name them different things. Uh, but multi-party literally just means you can run multiple parties at once uh it has nothing to do uh, it, is, it is it is a separate system like here i can do cursed farmer and this one we're just going to hop over here uh, and we're going to let deacon and a familiar oh it's uni and we'll let deacon and uni uh hang out over here uh and, and this could be a, you know this wouldn't be the greatest party in the world uh but this could be a party that's going on uh and then i could switch over here uh, and I could fire up a completely different party. I could go, I can be wild. I can, instead of going to the Cursed Farmer, I could go to the Mad Wizard. And I could run the Mad Wizard. And I can run it with a completely different party. Uh, I can even, I can even make another one of those. Because I have multiple parties open. How, how, how was I able to do this wild and, and amazing thing? Uh... Via multi-party mode. How do you get multi-party mode? If you're brand new, you're like, that button isn't there for me. At this this little button, this adventuring parties button. You're like, that doesn't show up for me in the game. And you're right, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, advent the adventuring parties button and access to both adventuring parties and Modron stuff uh, is unlocked by completing an adventure called Split the Party. Split the Party. If you are a fan of D&D, &D, uh, you will know that's... Normally not something you want to do, uh, but I encourage you to do it, uh, both in D&D &D and in this game. <laughs> both in D&D &D and this game. Uh, it is it is a, a, a specific unlock adventure that when, you, when this button is available and you see it and you click on it, it will say unlock a new party and then it will tell you, hey, do this adventure and you click on and this will be green and you click unlock and you will go do a special variant. You will go do a very special variant uh, where... Where you have no favor and can't earn any, right? Uh, there are special restriction rules that make it uh, incredibly difficult. Uh, and because uh, because I totally woke up real early to do this today, I totally forgot to prep uh, to get that rules open. Hold on. Uh, you will have special event rules uh, or special variant rules that you have to follow. Uh, and you, you only have to go to level 50, but the adventure itself is much more difficult uh, 
uh, because of these rules. Uh, and but they've also uh, they've also increased the the like the scaling for the level, like how quick things do damage and how much health they have. Uh, so getting to 50 is a challenge, uh, especially with these rules and without any kind of favor at all. Um, but the thing is, is the big restriction, the biggest restriction here and the hardest part of this, uh, is, uh, comes with the, like the next three restrictions. One, your click damage is reduced to zero, uh, after area five. So you can't click through it at all. Uh, and you can't use fire breath potions at all. So this is a this is a variant where you 100% have to build a formation to complete it. Uh, once you bring a champion in to the adventure, you can't remove them. So like for instance here, if I, I started with uh, Kathris, well, if that's how I start the adventure, I can't. It won't let me. I can come over here, but it won't let me swap over to anybody else. I can move them around in my in my formation layout, but I can't drag them down into the bench uh, and make it so that uh, I can bring somebody else in. So you have to be very careful about who you select uh, and 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 when you place them in your formation. The win is because regularly, three times in your adventure on your way to fifty. Um, Half of the champions in your formation, rounding up, get removed from the party and can't be put back in for the rest of the adventure. So they will be locked out of your uh, of, of your ability to use them. Uh, it, it's it supposedly does that somewhat at random. Um, we have a, a conspiracy theory that you know if you start with Brunor, you'll end with Brunor. He'll never get removed, but. Uh, that that I don't I don't know that that's been a hundred percent. It's been real close to a hundred percent of that happening uh, for people. Uh, but that could be you know we don't know what factors are they're taking into account behind the scenes. Some people uh, have have postulated that uh, the highest item level champions uh, uh, have a higher chance of staying in, and the lower item level champions might get removed. But in general, just know that. At levels 13, after completing, uh, or when you get to 13, 27, and 37, uh, half of your champions are going to go away. If you have two champions in, that means one champion is going to disappear. If you have three, it rounds up, so two champions will disappear. So if you have three, you might as well have four in, in some cases. Not always, uh, because, you know, you're going to lose two anyway. Who knows? But keep that in mind. So you're always going to lose half your champions. If you have one, if you only have one in... They're going away, right? Uh, but the thing is, is because you can't use click damage and because you can't use fire breath potions, you have to put in champions to be able to progress. You have to. Um, yeah. So, uh, so how do you, how do you get access to this, uh, what sounds like difficult adventure? Uh, because this button, again, that button doesn't show up right away. Uh, access to split the party requires that you have two champions in every one of your bench slots. So down here, uh, along the bottom, uh, you will see I have, I have, I have 12 different bench slots. Uh, so do you. Uh, and I have all these little, uh, the technical term for these arrows is swippy swappy buttons. At least that's my technical term for them. Uh, you have to be able to have to have one of these buttons in every one of your slots because that means you have at least one extra champion in that slot, which means you have two champions in each slot. Minimum. Two champions in each slot. That's how you gain access to split the party. This button will show up when you're halfway there. When you have six swaps, like, you know, you have six slots that have swaps, that button will show up. It will let you click it, but then it will tell you you can't do this yet because you don't have 12 champions in each slot. It's kind of a heads up that you you might have something you want to work towards. Uh, we recommend, I, I recommend working towards it from the moment you start this game. Uh, we, we, we talked about this a lot yesterday. Uh, when people were doing their time gates, a lot of people were doing their first natural time gate because it's a time gate weekend. Uh, get your free time gates, folks. Uh, one of the things you want to look for is not just who's good in each slot, but who do you need an extra champion in each slot for? That gets prioritized over just a strong champion. Because getting to split the party 
and uh, and and completing it gets you access to not only these multiple parties in the background, but it gets you access to your first Modron core. It is it is one of the rewards for completing Split the Party is your first background party, but also your Modest core. Mod the Modest core is your first Modron core that you will get. Uh, it is the the reward, uh, along with a couple other things, uh, for completing that adventure. Um, just keep in mind, again, this is split the party as an adventure that you you get you get to try it, and if you fail, you you don't earn any favor, so it doesn't get easier. Uh, the only way to make it easier is to go in with a solid plan for you. Um, so that you know what's going to happen, you, you now you know you have some you have an idea now if you've done it once and failed, what's going to happen, and you can plan ahead uh, to complete it. I will tell you that while uh, for new players a lot those restrictions may seem like a lot, uh, the moment you qualify for split the party, the moment you have two champions in each slot, regardless of what kind of gear is on those champions, you can go complete that adventure. You can do it. I know you can. I believe in you. Uh, because it is it is really just about managing uh, how you add champions and at what time and how many uh, more than it is uh, like, are you super epically geared? Do you have tons of power on your account? Uh, it's not it's not really that type of adventure. It's just managing uh, kind of your expectations, your formation and and kind of using some of the things that you've hopefully learned uh on your way to earning those champions uh to make this uh to make this a little bit better uh it is a good idea to, to potentially have some uh giant strength potions on hand to have a little extra damage uh some clairvoyance potions so that you have a little extra gold find because again there's since you can't earn favor you have you go in with with just no gold find and that doesn't mean oh i want to stack gold find champions because then you're not going to really be able to that's that could be problematic. Uh, so uh, clairvoyance potions are good, um, and heroism potions for a little extra health, uh, because you know, uh, again, the damage uh, and uh, and and the health of the enemies are scaling up a lot faster than you are, right? Uh, so those having those around uh, can come in handy. A uh, special shout out to speed potions, just for uh, if you if you run in like to small some small speed potions, uh, if you run into uh, a problem where you just don't have enough gold find and you need to to farm gold a bit, uh, because the only way to farm gold and split the party is just to sit on a level that you can beat uh, and kill things repeatedly, right? Uh, so yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, but just know uh, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be difficult. You can absolutely do it uh, once you get there. So, doing split the party unlocks multiple parties. It gets you it gets you one free party, so you will have this second party slot, and it gets you the modest core, the modest core. Uh, but wait, there's more. Uh, there is a split the party too. That's how I have another another party. Okay, so. After I think you I think you know where I'm going here. After you have unlocked your first Modron core and your uh, first background party, you'll have an option. You'll have this unlock a new party, and it will be green. You can you can you can try it. It won't let you because you're going to need not two champions in each slot, but three. Once you have three champions in each slot, this, this should be kind of straightforward. You should see how they're doing this. Once you have three champions in each slot, you can go do split the party too. Split the party to uh, electric. No, that's not it. Uh, the reward for split the party two is another background party, your third background party, or your third party overall, I should say, uh, the second background party, and the fast core. The fast core is what I have over here. It's got the little winged eyebrows. Uh, so again, you can unlock currently. Uh, a total of up to a three parties coming Wednesday. We will be introduced to Split the Party 3. Split the Party 3. Now, Split the Party 2 has uh, slightly different rules. Uh, again, you have to have three champions in each slot to access Split the Party 2. Uh, and 
in areas 13, 27, and 37, instead of 50% of your champions going away, 60% do. That may not seem like you're like, but if I'm only using like three or four champions, what? Uh, it's, it is obviously a little more than half. Uh, it does come in handy because it actually allows you uh, uh, to know a little more uh, when you have certain numbers of champions. You can, you can actually remove all because it rounds up if you were only for some reason using two champions to start out with. Uh, you know if it's doing 60, if it's removing 60%, both your champions are going away. Right? So, uh, it, it can give you some um, uh, clues on exactly, like you can you can actually remove everyone if you want, which you couldn't do in Split the Party 1. The challenge, the big challenge here is the scaling of damage and health way higher. Way higher. Um, and I will say they do tie in for these. They do tie in the gold that drops off enemies based off how difficult they are. So you also start earning uh, a lot more gold in that one. But again, you're going to want to come into that one with those potions ready uh, because gold find uh, is a big deal. Gold find is a big deal uh, for all of these. But the only time you're going to get that is, is from potions. Or for Split the Party 2 and 3, if you have a Modron core and you've got some gold nodes, gold find nodes enabled, that's a bonus too. We'll talk about that here in a moment when we talk when we go in and look at Modron cores a little closer. Uh, so just know the the same layout is is there, like the same formation layout. We call it the bacon strip layout. It looks like a it looks like a squiggly strip of bacon. Uh, you're going to be using the same layout for Split the Party 1 and 2. Presumably it will be the same for three. We'll find out on Wednesday. Uh, but you know there may be there may be a little harder restrictions for split the party three. We, we maybe maybe they're gonna say they're gonna round up more. Who knows? I would say they're probably going to scale up the enemies even harder than before, which is saying a lot. Which is saying a lot considering uh, it was already scaled up pretty pretty hard for split the party two. Uh, but once you get that, hey, then you'll be able to switch over. Once you do split the party two, you'll be able to switch over and you'll add a, a third party. I'm going to go wild. I think everybody saw this coming and do beast intentions at the same time. Right? I'll add, a, I'll add a familiar over here. And now I have a count on one, two, and three formations going at the same time. Uh, I also have three Modron cores. But wait, Garwar, how do you get three Modron cores? If you said there, you only said there were two rewards, Modron cores. Well, there's a third core currently, uh, the strong core. So this is the, this is the modest core. This is your first core. This is the fast core. This is your second free core. Strong core is the, is the other core. That one, see if you see down here where it says buy additional cores, that one will show up here if you don't own it. Uh, and the Modron shop wants 500,000 gems for it. That's a lot of gems, folks. If you're not kind of mid to end game running super fast speed teams for gem farming, that's a lot of gems, folks. Uh, so at the present time, at the present time, it is generally my recommendation to just work on your, your first two cores and not really shoot for the third one until you start generating gems at a very high rate. Uh, because there's there's other things you can do with those gems. Uh, and besides, uh, again, we will get another core here uh, Wednesday. You'll have a magic core for free. So you'll be able to get up to three cores for free. You'll, you know, there will still be a strong core. And if you want to automate all of your parties, you will, you will, you know, that is something you will want to work towards. Um, uh, yeah. Now, so how do, how, how do background parties work? Well, they work the exact same way as, as what we call your active party. Whatever party you are in, this, even though this is my third party, this is my active party because I'm in it. That, that makes sense, right? I just want to make sure people understand. Uh, because this is important when you're, when we're talking, uh, when we start talking about Modron cores. It is important to know, uh, you know, where your Modron core is. When you only have one, you want to make sure it's in your active party. You want to make if I if I only had one Modron core here, let's presume I only have one Modron core, uh, and and this is now my active party, and it's the one I'm going to 
I'm going to play, I'm going to take it out of that one. I'm going to put it over here. Okay, now this party suddenly has those bonuses. Whatever bonuses you've unlocked for, for from your Modron are now applying to this party. It is now my active party. Uh, this is important because your Modron course starts out at level 1 and currently levels up to level 15. And the way your Modron core gains experience uh, is by counting how many how many levels you have completed with it in a party. Well, the fastest way to complete levels is to be in an active party and potentially have some speed champions out. But just think about all of those levels you complete on any given day in your active parties while you're running around, uh, doing adventures, doing variants. This is... This is what you want. You want to make sure your Modron core is in your active party. It will highlight that party is green. It's the one you're currently messing with. I am. If it sounds like I'm, I'm really trying to ingrain this into your mind, it's because when multi-party Modrons first came out, people's first assumption was that, well, you put your Modron core in your background party. And then it just automates stuff back there. Well, I mean, that's true. You can do that. The problem is, is uh, background parties, uh, they run effectively. They're not running an active version of the game like we are here in our active party. They're running a simulation. That simulation simulates uh, completing a level in a certain amount of time. I believe right now it is uh, one level every 40 seconds is what it estimates. Well, 40 seconds is a, is, a, is a lot of time. There are people with full formations and speed champions uh, that can complete, uh, you know, dozens of levels in 40 seconds. Uh, so when you are first starting out and you are leveling up your Modron core, you want to make sure it is in your active party. So it is getting as many levels as it can and leveling up as quickly as possible. Nordum the Modron is coming. Nordom, who's going to be a new champion, who is a Modron champion, uh, actually has an ability that if they are in your party, your Modron core levels up faster. So keep that in mind. For those of you who want to power level your cores, you might want to start running lots of stuff with Nordom. Might want to run lots of stuff with Nordom. Uh, so, uh, background parties. You can run them manually, just like you run your parties right now. It's not that hard. You just got to keep an eye on them. If you'll note, uh, right here, we've got a little number. What is that number? Well, that's how. That's what level that party is on. We've got a little thing filling up. Well, what is this? What is this green thing? It's basically telling you, as you notice, that just clicked over when it. It's simulating how long it's taking to complete this level. That's what's going on. Now it's it's running it's running that simulation in batches in the background it's not just doing one level at a time so this is a bit of a you know a bit of a fluff uh if i were to switch over we might be on 16. it's not always going to be completely accurate uh you can you can run these manually and when you see this stop like like this see how this is auto progress off when it does this and you see this here you know hey i need to go mess with that and i need to go figure out why it stopped I need to go figure out why it stopped. Uh, and so then you can just switch over. Like if we hop over, this is at 16. Let's go see if we're actually on 16. It might be on 15. We'll find out real quick. It's going to calculate your offline progress because that's what it considers. Uh, yeah, we're on 15. It actually pushed back. It turned off auto progress for some reason. Uh, I can come over now and I can level up uh, my champion because that wasn't happening. Because I didn't put a familiar on there. We're going to talk about Modrons uh, have limitations to their automation. Uh, familiars are the other half of the automation puzzle. So if you want to automate background parties, you're going to need familiars. Because you can only use... I, I can't use Uni in any other party unless I take Uni out of here. Oh wow, I got wrecked. Deacon just not doing enough damage apparently. That doesn't seem right. That doesn't seem right at all. Uh, Deacon, why are you doing no damage? Yeah, you should just, you should wreck them. Is Deacon attacking? 
There's an attack. Okay. He just didn't attack fast enough, apparently. And got overwhelmed. Okay, let's just ultimate. Doom! There we go. There we go. Now Deacon will do this. Now Deacon will do this. So, uh, your background party, you're going to have to check in on it every now and then. You're going to have to make sure that you're leveling up your champions, adjusting a formation, adding any new champions you need, whatever. One of the things that can trigger a failure, like, like happened here, this was in an active party, but something that can trigger this symbol uh, is if one of your champions dies. If for whatever reason one of your champions dies... Uh, your party's going to stop. Just flat. Uh, it doesn't matter if if you could have completed it even with that champion dead. That is just a fail state trigger for your background party. For the simulation that's running, that is one of the triggers. Uh, any party member dying for any reason. Uh, another fail state is if uh, if you just can't kill off the enemies in a, a certain amount of time. So like I said, it starts off looking at a simulation at 40 seconds, but that doesn't mean that if you ever can't kill, if you if at some point you can't kill it in 40 seconds, it's going to fail. Hmm. What it'll do is it'll start stretching the time out. It'll go to then 60 seconds and maybe then 90 seconds. There is, I don't know exactly what the trigger, uh, time trigger is, but eventually it will just consider you failed. Even if all your characters are alive, it will consider you having failed uh, simply because, let's do it that way instead, just like that, simply because somebody died, simply because somebody died, uh, or because you just couldn't kill anybody, or because nobody died, right? So these are the two things that are going to trigger failures. Uh, so things to keep in mind about building out a background party, uh, it is good to have uh, something leveling your champions up. Familiars. It's good to have familiars leveling your champions up. You would switch over to upgrades, and then you would just sit, park a familiar down here, and your familiar would just, as long as there's gold, it's going to level that champion up, right? That's how familiars work. The other thing to keep in mind is if, if you are trying to do runs where you're using click damage only, which is something you could do, like originally this was, we were killing everywhere, like right now we're killing everything with this, with this person, our little Zuni pup. Uh, because I leveled up click damage. Well, there are situations where click damage uh, isn't going to kill things quickly. It will kill a regular health enemy like this, like these, where they're just they're just a blob, a single big blob of health. Uh, as long as as long as the, you've got a high enough click damage, you're going to kill that enemy. But if you get to a segmented health uh, enemy or or a barricade, like you've seen these, like a fallen log, and it's got all these uh, little health segments you have to click through. Well, uh, a familiar will only click one of those once every five seconds. It doesn't matter that a familiar usually clicks five times a second. It will only remove a segment from a segmented health uh, enemy or object once every five seconds. Those objects usually have uh, anywhere from 25 to 50 health. You can do the math, folks. There's no way. There's no way you can click through that in the 40 seconds that it's initially looking uh, at, at the... Here we go. Here's one right here. Uh, it will only click through this uh, every... This is 25 health. It will only click through this once every five seconds. For whatever reason... Oh, there there he goes. We're, we're getting more off of uh, Kathris. Well, actually, Kathris has a slow... He's every, he's every five seconds, too. So this is, this is slowing our progress down quite a bit, right? If this happens in your background party... It's if it stretches that timer out because it was doing that, it will then run that simulation. It's a stretched period of potentially a stretched period of time for everything else. It slows down your entire party. So just know that if, if you are on a level that has armor or has segmented health things like this, uh, you're, if you aren't if you aren't using a full party, your progress is going to get slowed down quite a bit. Your progress is going to get slowed down quite a bit. Uh, let's see, anything else to remember about backgrounds? Those are the big things for me. I actually moved away. I know some people like to do just the clicker, the familiars clicking in the background. I always had problems with that. Um, like most of the times when my background party would fail, it was because of, 
it was it was if I was just trying to use clickers and not leveling up champions. And when I switched to just putting my familiars on champions and leveling those up instead, I stopped having problems in my background party. It could just be me. That just might be me. That is a very fair when it comes to software. That might have just been a me thing. Uh, but just know, you know, uh, you may have to finagle your background party a bit to make sure that you're you're actually doing damage with your champions or make sure or just try to figure out if you're having if it's stopping a lot, figure out what your fail state is. Is it damage? Is it health? Uh, hard to say, you know, and you may need to just go look at what it's doing in the background uh, for doing that. Things you can use your parties for. I know, I again, I have mine listed as gem farming, but if you're newer, you could, uh, you could, in a background party, you could start a, a variant for a patron. And I say start it because depending on what your your secondary team of champions is, that, that team might not be able to finish it. But if they start it, uh, you're going to get extra progress while you're doing something in your active party. You can just do something with your primary team, your A team, and your active party. And in your B team and your background party, uh, you can just be starting adventures so that when they hit there with the farthest they can go, I mean, who knows, maybe they'll complete it for you automatically. Yay, free stuff done in the background. Uh, but maybe they'll hit a wall that they can't pass, and even if you level them up, they're just not a solid enough party to go far enough yet because you just don't have enough champions to build a solid second party. You can then just swap in your uh, your A team, right? How do you do that? You come over here, you hit the sip of swippy swappy button, and there's this little icon that says Deacon is in a different party. Click to find and recall them. Well, I can instantly do this. It's going to say, are you sure? And I go, yes. And then, hey, Deacon is now here. But I have to level Deacon up here because Deacon's never been here. Now, suddenly I can use, uh, I can make this my active party, right? Uh, I have lost someone in my other party. It's going to probably stop. It's probably going to stop uh, at some point. Uh, but now I can then complete that variant. Right. And I can take that other party, uh, whatever it was doing, uh, it maybe maybe I started another variant with that and it can just chug away at that on the background or it can do regular storyline adventures or it can do patron variants or what I do a lot with my background parties or, or used to. Uh, it can do patron challenges for me while I'm doing other stuff. So I can be doing I can be working on the newest content that dropped in Idle Champions uh, and completing that while patron stuff gets done in the background, right? You can do all of these things. Are there some limitations? Sure. There are some, there are some patron challenges can't be done in the background. Uh, you will learn these things, uh, but, but CNE has stated repeatedly that they are committed to, uh, making sure that more things, uh, in the game can be, can be triggered in, in your background parties. Um, and in improving the background party quality of life, that is, this has been an ongoing thing um, for the last couple of years that background parties have existed. Um, and the quality of life in background has gotten better and better. It's still maybe not the greatest, which is why, uh, again, usually, like I say, start something in the background. You're going to get some free progress, uh, but it just may not, you know, may not do everything you want it to do just yet. Uh, but they're, they're working on that. All right, uh, let's talk about your core, and I don't mean uh, your abs. All right, so the first core you get is uh, is this one. It's your modest core. Uh, this is a whole lot. This is a finished, completed core. Uh, let me... Oh, really? Did I not? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, did I not make a second one? Uh, let's turn off progress. So I don't have to worry about it blipping. All right, let's clear this. Boom. This is this is the first core you're going to get. It's going to look like this, except uh, a lot of these boxes are going to be blocked out because you can't go there. Because what happens is when you start at level one, you have basically this region uh, available to you that you can place pipes in. Pipes are these things over here. Uh, you will start out with a small assortment of them. They start you with a starter pack that will let you hook up this node and this node, but not necessarily do so at a high flow. We'll talk about flow in a minute, but this is your Modron core. Uh, it is basically a mini game that it gets referred to as the pipe game. Uh, but, but ultimately this is Modron flow. Uh, you want to, 
the goal of this uh, mini game is to hook up uh, as many of these nodes as possible because all of these nodes give you bonuses uh, for your gameplay. So like this one right here, you'll learn what the little icons mean. This is a gold find node. This is an all champs damage node, right? So these are gonna, just going to raise the damage of your champions. There are different kinds of all champs damage nodes. This is the basic one. It's 1600. Uh, this one's 1800. You'll see it's got a little, uh, yeah, little yellow flame down here. Uh, and then one of these, this one, uh, uh, it's kind of a, just a bigger flame. Uh, this one goes all the way up to 2400. Uh, so you can have different nodes with different values. Uh, the symbols like a heart. This one means this is going to be your constitution. So it's an up. It's a bonus based on constitution. Uh, this arrow is referencing uh, that it reduces the amount of gold required to level up your champions. Uh, this one is intelligence. Uh, this is health. I believe that's health. Yeah, that's health of all champions. Uh, that's that's wisdom. Uh, this one's dexterity, right? So you can learn what all of these mean, and hooking them up gets you different things. What does the skull do? This reduces the health your enemies have. Not bad, right? Uh, so you can get a lot of different kinds of bonuses uh, based on your Modron core and hooking it up. Uh, this is what's called like the starter note. This is where everything goes, starts from. Uh, and it pumps out, uh, I believe, what they refer to as psychomorphic energy. That's, that's these little bubbles kicking out here. Uh, and, you know, if you hook stuff up with it, uh, it's just they're going to flow. Everything lights up and starts working. Uh, this, if we move this, this funky thing is your automation component. If you do not have flow moving into this component, doesn't have to come out of it. There's a tip for you. Uh, as long as you have flow moving into this component, you turn on automation for your Modron core. Uh, automation is going to handle for your cores. Uh, that's this screen. It's going to handle uh, loading in a formation layout. Again, it doesn't load in your champions. It just loads in this layout of champions. So when you buy your champions, they automatically go into the formation in this layout. So it can set your formation. It can set the area goal you reset on. This is this gets used a lot for free plays and gem farming. If you're doing variants uh, or adventures, this doesn't matter at all. In fact, it doesn't work at all. It only works in free plays. So this is basically for gem farming. Uh, and it sets buffs. Well, what, what buffs? It sets the potions that you can use. As you can see, I have one set here. Medium potion of speed. It's going to activate at area three. Right? I can choose through a little layout which buff I want, which potion I want to have uh, active. And then I can set uh, what level I want it to, to come in at. Right? Just like that, and then I can remove it. Uh, if I ever run out of that potion, it will just automatically disable. Uh, I don't have to turn anything off manually. It just won't pull it, and it'll show uh, that it will click in if I if I get more of them. Uh, but these are the three things that your Modron automation can do for you. Uh, so again, this is this is very specific to. Uh, uh, to like uh, area goal, very specific to basically jump farming, uh, but set formation you can use everywhere. Uh, any formation that you have saved in uh, the campaign you're on. So this is this is Sword Coast. I've got ten formations here. I can load in any of these, and it will set that formation layout. And as long as I have familiars loaded into this layout too, which you can see here, the little mage hand, and it has a number. It's telling me how many familiars I have set up with this formation, it will load them all in and do whatever rules I set I set that to based off the, the save formation I made already. Remember, save save formations are a completely different system. That's that's just a basic system in your game over here. You've got the you've got you I can click to save this deacon on his own if I wanted. Uh, but uh, I can save any kind of formation. I can save the familiars in that formation. That's all going to load into your formation save manager, um, but then that's what that's what Modron automation is going to pull uh, from when it's loading in your formations. Now you'll notice it does say specializations. This is an added feature for your formation saves once you have unlocked Modrons. 
you can now, uh, if you if you build out this formation and you save it, not only after you've put your familiars in, but after you've chosen specializations for everyone, it will store those specialization choices for you. So as it's actively leveling up them up, when it gets to the specialization, it will automatically choose whatever specializations you have assigned to this in this formation. Uh, if you haven't leveled them up that far, you like say, let's say we didn't level Shandy up enough, it would look like this. And then I can click on this and I can choose manually which specialization I want that formation to load in once it gets there. So this is another helpful version of automation. So you can preset exactly what uh, you want to have chosen ahead of time so that it can just automatically do that in the background for you. Uh, so that's a nice, a nice time saving feature. So again, once you have Modrons, you'll be able to not only load in your formation layout, uh, it will load in, it will auto load in and place familiars based off how you saved it. And it will load in specializations. So we'll get all of those. Uh, and this works for every campaign in the game, for all the events, for time gates, everything. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now again, your normal formation save manager is going to save your layout and your familiars, but won't save your specialization choices until you get a Modron core. Until you get a Modron core, right? Uh, so uh, how do you how do you go about uh, lighting up all these nodes? Well, again. You will get a starter pack of pipes, uh, but the only way to get more Modron pipes, uh, there's, there's well, not the only way. There's two ways currently. Uh, three. Three ways. Three main ways. <laughs> it's Saturday morning, folks. Uh, three main ways. Uh, one, you level up your Modron core. Every time you level up your Modron core, you get a single Modron component chest this thing down here uh two uh you can buy them from the shop like if i click buy chests here it's going to take me over here and i can throw cash at the game to support the game uh and get that uh there's also a pack uh did i buy it already nope nope there it is uh the modron founders pack uh it gets you a cool little modron familiar it gets you 50 modron chests it gets you a potion of psychomorphic energy which buffs your endpoint boosts uh, and it gets you some modron component pieces uh so so you can pay cash or you can go to your patron shop or you can go to your patron shop and once once you unlock uh patrons in this game there are lots of things you could purchase from their shop uh one of those is Timegate pieces. That's a big one when you're new. But also, Modron component chests. This, this shows up as a purchase option once you have a Modron core. You can buy one chest a week. When you can do this, you want to buy one chest every week from every patron you can do this for. Uh, because this increases... Uh, this is the biggest way, like if you're free to play, this is the biggest way you're going to get access to more uh, components. Because you're only going to get one chest every time you level your core up. But you can get up to four of these a week from your patrons. Just for doing just for doing challenge stuff and, and getting your free plays done, right? Uh, this is this is big. Right? So make sure you're doing this. If you have if you have this available, make sure you're buying your mojo. As you can see, I bought mine. Make sure you're buying your components every week. Uh, when you when you get some, you have them in your inventory like normal, and you can open them like normal. Uh, they have, there's going to be five cards per, uh, except it's going to be pipe shapes. It's going to be pipe shapes, right? So you can have everything. You can have white, green, blue, and purple. I'm going to tell you folks, when you're starting off, the color isn't as important as the shape and the directionality. We're going to talk about direction at what directionality is in a moment. Uh, but shape, like all of these are elbows. Uh, this one is a corner. This one's just a straight corner. This one's a T, right? There's different shapes. And if you look real close on here, you'll see little green arrows pointing in different directions. That's your directionality. So these pipes have no directionality. The way Modron Flow works is when you hook a pipe up, uh, whatever side is closest to the, to the, the starter node is going to get uh, the inflow and the furthest 
uh, and the other further ones are going to get the outflow. Seems to make sense, right? Uh, so like here, if I hook this pipe up, it's just automatically going to know, well, this is the start and this is the exit, right? But if I hook a directional pipe up, like this one, these arrows are pointed up. That means this pipe manages the flow and it only pushes flow from the bottom to the top. If I put this to this node, you'll note it doesn't light up. It can't. It can't because the flow doesn't match up. So what do you want directional flow for? You want directional flow when you when you absolutely it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. It's, this is just a bonus. Uh, but when you run into uh, T's uh, like this. This is a generic T, but you may want the flow to go in specific directions. You may not just want it to go in this one and out those two. You may want it to go in a very specific way. Uh, and, and getting that specific flow in one of your, in one of your nodes makes sense, right? So in this one, it's got a down arrow on the top. It's got an up arrow from the bottom and it's got an out arrow on the right. So this means it wants it wants this flow, it wants it to come out, and then it wants flow to come in the bottom. This is a bad piece for here. It's effectively just functioning as a corner, but it's going to do a, a lot of work for us when we start creating uh, what we call buff boxes. When we start combining, splitting flow and combining flow later with bonuses to generate higher amounts of flow. Why would we want to do that? Because this input power starts at one but these nodes if you'll note they want flow greater than four to really activate all of their bonuses which means somehow some way you need to increase your flow now some of these are going to have bonuses anything from green on up is going to have a percentage bonus to your flow they're going to be fairly small so you've got to find ways that are going to multiply like here's here's some 20s into the blues if we get down all the way down here in the purples, you'll see there's some 40s. That's nice and all. That's nice and all. But what matters is, is you know, early on you're not necessarily going to have all the best, all the 40 percenters or whatever to get you the highest flow. What you can do is create uh, what we call buff boxes. So the very simplest form of a buff box uh, we'll do we'll do here. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. So I'm going to split my flow. I'm going to find another pipe. Uh, here we go. That's going to create... Well, I said simple, didn't I? Hold on. I did say simplest form. So here's the simplest form of a buff box. So I'm splitting the flow. I'm wrapping it around. Uh, and I'm rejoining. Uh, this, is, this, isn't, this is a horrible buff box. But I'm rejoining. Uh, now, I have to be careful of how I rejoin. Uh, here, because if you'll note, I have I have flow going to the left, I have flow going to the right. This isn't doing anything. It's literally not doing anything. So this is where the directionality comes in. Uh, so I need a flow that's going to ex I, it's going to need arrows going to the right here, and it's going to need arrows coming down here, and it's going to need arrows kicking out, or maybe just going into this. Let's light that up actually instead. Uh, so it's going to need something like this, right? Arrows coming in, arrows coming down, arrows shooting to the side. Boom. Uh, we went from having one flow here to having 1.75 or 1.575 flow here. Doesn't may not feel like a huge bonus, but again, this is a very simple version. And if you'll note, this now says plus 50%. Wait a minute, Gar, why that said plus 5%? What the heck? Because of the split. Because of the split and then the combination, it's upping the multiplier. It's upping the multiplier. So this is probably this. This is the simplest type of buff box you're ever going to see, uh, because it's literally just a split and then a recombine with neutral pieces, right? But if I load in uh, my saved fully epic core, you'll see a much uh, a bit more complex uh, type of buff box. This is an eight-piece buff box. They can get more complex than this. Um, and you'll note, you know, this starts out with a 20%. That's fine. All of these are 20, 40, 40. Uh, but then we've got like 100. That's not 100. That's a 10%. This one says 333, but that's a 10% too. Again, 
the number of, of things that we've split and then multiplied and shot into, uh, we've gone now from uh, one flow here to 11.61 flow here. And eventually we we'll end up like here's 32, there's 61. These aren't the highest numbers in the world, but you can see even really far away from my starter node, I'm looking at, you know, at least double digit numbers, 30. So this makes sure that everything ends up greater than four everywhere, regardless of how many times I've split and recombined. Like down here, we're into the 40s uh, because we've got another buff box, right? This is just buff box after buff box, multiplier after multiplier. I've ignored some in some areas because frankly, I don't need them. I don't need them. I'm already meeting my flow goals, right? So once you can once you can hit that four, that's your base. Once you can turn on epic flow to all of yours, you're going to hit this maximum number that currently exists in the game. The developers have talked about adding some kind of overflow system at some point in the future. It's not currently in the game, but at some point it may matter how much more over four you are. But right now it doesn't. So the goal right now is just to slowly increase as you get more pieces. As you open those boxes and you get more pipe shapes and better directionality, you will find directionality is what you need. Because if you'll note, I've got lots of arrows pointing lots of places because only with the proper directionality in your T pipes and your cross pipes, can you build major boxes like this. Uh, so when you're first starting out, just lighting up each node is the most important thing. That's fairly straightforward. It's a less than two flow, so it doesn't even matter. You don't even really have to try to get a lot of flow early on. But once you get more pieces, once you get more, more Modron pipes, um, the goal is to start out trying to epic out uh, what you consider to be your important nodes. Uh, so whether you're going for gold find or whether you're going for all champs damage, you want to aim for those important nodes um, and get those epic. Uh, as you level up your core, it will expand more and more of where I believe this core starts here. It comes down to these, comes up to this one. Uh, it, may, it might open up these two, and then it kicks out over here and it does some stuff over here. And then it starts expanding through the bottom uh, and up a little bit. So eventually you will then have to pipe out this entire map. Um, but you're going to just do a little, it's just going to unlock a few nodes at a time and a little more space at the time. And as you accrue more of those pieces and components, you can start uh, extending your flow, building more buff boxes and adjusting things to make sure that as you progress, uh, you can continue to epic out uh, in your progress until you are fully epic. Uh, again, shapes uh, start off uh, the whites are the basics. Uh, so you're just gonna get basic shapes. Uh, green introduces T's and directionality of flow. So directed corner component, but also, uh, you know, tease. Uh, the blue is going to introduce, uh, it's going to continue on with that, but it's going to introduce cross pieces, but they're going to be, uh, you know, undirected cross pieces. And then purple, uh, again, it's going to be some larger multipliers. Multipliers go up as you go along here. Larger multipliers, but also directed cross components, right? So again, early on, hey, you get an epic. I mean, that's nice. But what's more important when you're new uh, is just getting the right shape and directionality of your pipe. Uh, it will, you will learn real quick what you're looking for and what you need, and you'll get real excited when you get that blue that has the right directionality, or even the green with the right directionality, for you to create a buff box. Uh, whereas later on, when you're worried about just getting the most flow, uh, you'll, you'll then start hunting epics right with the right directionality. Uh, but don't worry too much if, if you've got lots of white, green, and blues and not many epics. You can still create solid buff boxes um, without them. Like, uh, well, I, some of these are now upgraded epics. But at one point, most of my buff boxes were greens and blues, and I didn't have that many epics at all. But I have lots of pipes now, so that's not the case. Uh, so that is... Multi-party. That is Modron Automation. Remember, Modron Automation is just half of your automation. The other half is your familiars. So these two work together. Uh, and that is a bit of a starter on Modron Flow. We might revisit Modron Flow again soon. Hmm. 
We might revisit motor and flow again soon. Again, those were, these are some of the earliest. This this tutorial was one of the, was the very first tutorial, but uh, Garwa's Guide to Modron Flow was uh, followed that up. We may we may do that again. Uh, yes, I do see in chat one thing uh, we want to talk about. Uh, the bane, the bane of our existence, folks. Oh, this is why I, I kind of shoved this out of my memory. Uh, let's clear this out. The bane of my existence. Uh, okay, we're gonna do. <laughs> We're going to do that wrong thing I did earlier uh, when I was like, this is a bad piece. You wouldn't want to use this piece. Uh, we're going to use this. We're going to use this piece in a different direction. So remember when I said this is a bad piece and you wouldn't use this here. There's a reason why. There's a reason why. Let me show you. Uh, if I were to create this loop, this isn't uh, this one goes in. This one goes out. This one goes in. So you might be thinking, well, hey, Garwar, wouldn't it be great? If you just if you just loop that together to really to really multiply your flow, <sighs> no, folks, it's not. <laughs> it's not. I realize this looks like the the worst. Th yeah, this is the worst uh, setup of a pipe ever. But the but there are I could I could build out like some complex thing that that's kicking out a flow to here. And I could, you know, I mean, if we want to, if we want to, I can do this. I can actually do this. Hold on. Let me give you a better example because I don't want you to think I'm just being silly. And this is something you'll never run into because it is something you're going to run into. Let's say, uh, if you, if you don't prepare yourself, it is something you're going to run into. Let's say that what I want is this, right? I want this. I want to light this up, but I want to get the flow to four. And I'm like, well, Garwar said build, build buff boxes. So what if I just loop this back on itself? And what we'll get is we'll get this combination into this combination, and then it'll multiply the flow, right? And it'll increase it. No. No, it won't. No, it won't. You're going to overheat. What does overheating mean? Uh, basically, you're overpressurizing this piece because you're creating a uh, an endless loop. You're creating an endless feedback loop. Uh, and this doesn't work. This doesn't work. Uh, because if, if, if you think about this, this isn't water. This is psychomorphic energy. I want to be clear. But if this were water uh, and you tried to, and these were pumps that are increasing pressure, and you tried to increase the pressure and then push it back in on itself to increase the pressure even more, You'd, you'd blow this pipe up because it just can't, you can't do this. You can't shove the water in here. You can't shove the water in here because there's too much pressure already going here. You can't introduce more pressure. It, it, it goes real, it goes bad real fast, folks. It goes bad real fast. And that's what's happening here. You're creating an infinite loop system. Uh, and the game just says no. It says it in this real rude way of overheat, overheat, overheat with red flow. It doesn't necessarily tell you where the problem is, though. You have to figure that out yourself. You have to figure that out yourself. You have to understand, hey, there's a bunch of red flow here. Where is the problem? And you have to know that the only reason it's ever going to do this is when you've created an infinite loop. Um, this pipe is a good pipe. It's not good in this position. It's not good in this position. Um, you do not want, you do not want this, right? This would be, it would be better for me to use this pipe, um, and then take this out. This flow is going to reverse this, this flow is going to, this flow is going to reverse. There we go. Now, it, now it reverses, um, and then do this. Uh, oh no, no, that isn't, that isn't going to work either. Do this with a directed flow, uh, to activate and kick, activate this node, which turns on my automation and then kick the flow out over here. This works, but that other one doesn't, that other one doesn't at all. Okay. So, so just know that's going to be overheating, overheating. When we were beta, we, I was one of the beta testers for this, this whole system. And the, the, the thing, the first thing that made me get up and walk away from my computer when beta testing was when it overheated and the game didn't tell me why. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. 
because I had built out this complex thing. And yes, there was an infinite loop in there somewhere, but I didn't. There was nothing that told me I couldn't do that. And when it went red, I didn't know why it went red. It didn't tell me. So I, this is me telling you, folks, because the game isn't going to tell you. If it goes red, you create an infinite loop, and you need to find it, and you need to fix it. That's that's what it comes down to. Um, I have no doubt we have lots of questions, because this is a... Oh yeah, we're up to 29 questions already. Uh, we're going to take a short musical interlude uh, while I drink some water and let my uh, let my voice rest. I'm going to come back and I'm going to I'm going to rattle through all of your questions. Uh, yeah. And we will address any anything that I might have forgotten. I'm sure somebody has asked a question about uh, like, Carl, why didn't you talk about this? Uh, and then we'll cover it in, in the Q&A. All right. Uh, we'll be right back. I, I believe. I believe the break song. Uh, is for someone who gets used in automation quite a lot. This is Briv song. This is Steel Marrow uh, from Bardic Inspiration. Uh, enjoy. <laughs> Against his high, brief the bow will hold the line. He's always there to render aid. Not a sheep betwixt the stars, he takes his trip into the sky. Yeah. Touch a metal sound of thunder, snatch his food asunder. He's still. And we're back. That's a good song. That's a good song. Uh, all right, I'm going to dive into the questions. Remember, I'm going to hit the. If, if I don't hit your question right away, it's it's not. It's not because I don't like you. I enjoy you being here. I like your questions. I'm just going to hit the stuff that I feel is on topic first, and then we'll come back, uh, and and at least somewhat on topic first, uh, and then we'll come back. Uh, Xanth fan with the new split the party three and a new and the magic core incoming should I not buy the strong core I mean I don't know that there's a reason uh, currently in the game to buy the strong core well there's only one reason to buy the strong core in the game that I think is valid and that's if your DPS 
that you want to use is uh, is somebody like Krond, because uh, the strong core is really a melee core. It's really a melee core. Uh, it wants certain kind of stacks or a certain kind of stats, not stacks, stats. Um, and someone like Krond fits that well. So melee heavy hitters uh, are kind of what the strong core is for. If that's your jam, then you want the strong core. If not, you don't need it. Currently, the meta, uh, like the general meta, unless you get into Krond, is is the modest core is, is kind of the best core. And the fast core is for pushing real fast. But now we're going to see uh, the magic core coming. And uh, who knows, that may be more specialized for your casters. Uh, we will find out. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's see. Uh, random ginger. Uh, so if I need to unlock more champions for my bench slots, uh, am I using time gates for that? Uh, time gates can be one of the ways you, you do that. Uh, that's definitely one of the ways you unlock champions in this game. But the other is events. So this Wednesday, like right now we have a natural time gate weekend. Sure, you make your decision on your time gate if you can about, about who you're picking up uh, based off who you need in bench slots. But then also you know, the event's coming up. The event's coming up. Uh, and that's going to get you, if you're new, that's going to get you three new champions. Right? Uh, if you're not new, it's going to get you uh, at least one new champion. Nordom. Right? Uh, so that's the other way that you uh, that you increase. Those those two things, uh, outside of, you know, cash shop purchases, those two things are uh, are how you are, are, are two of the ways you can unlock champions. You can also do, uh, you can unlock evergreen champions by completing certain variants in the game. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> Lots of questions. We will hit all of these. Let me just make sure we're doing, uh, just make sure we're doing the stuff on, t on topic. A squishy. Should I end my time gate early to open another one to do split the party right away? If, if you have, uh, if you have completed here, I haven't even done my time gate yet. I'm, I'm real bad about this. Uh, if you have uh, gotten all three of your gold chests from your time gate, from your current free time gate, and you have six or more pieces to unlock a new one and you are, and you only need one more champ to do split the party, then yeah, that's a real good idea. Dive into split the party, get your Modron core. Basically getting that Modron core is the biggest thing. Having a second background party, nice, nice. But the Modron core, getting your modest core and starting the process of leveling it up uh, is a very big deal. I guess I should have mentioned this. Garwar, how much power is a fully epic Modron core? Like, what does that do for my party? Uh, going from no core to a fully epic modest core is minimum 100 levels of progress for you. So if your party normally gets to 425 without a Modron core in, once you have a fully epic Modron core, just that alone, if that's the only thing that changed, which, I mean, it won't be, but if that was the only thing that changed, you will go another 100 levels. You will go to 525 or, or beyond. Or beyond. How do I know this? Uh, when I was leveling, back when I was leveling up my fast core, uh, I would put my fast core in to get levels because, again, active party, I want, I want to level up my Modron core. And then when I would hit uh, my wall with the fast core in, I would swap my Modron core in and my fast core had no bonuses. I would swap my Modron, my modest core in, my modest was already fully epic and I would go another hundred plus levels. So getting, getting you on the way to doing that as soon as possible is a big deal. Uh, big deal. Obviously it's not going to get you hundred levels immediately. Um, uh, so when I'm doing split the party, uh, the fragile, I'm assuming patron global gold find work perks work. Yes. Any kind of global gold find perk from blessings. Well, blessings won't do it because those are all campaign specific. There isn't one that's a global, but anything from perks like uh, patron perks would work. Anything from your Modron core will work. Uh, but usually when you're doing split the party one, you probably don't have... Usually you get split the party one uh, before you get access to patrons. 
and we're talking about you like you'd have Mert first. He doesn't have a his global gold find is all the way down here. You wouldn't normally be a tier six for split the party one, but but for split the party two and three you might be. Um, I find having a lot of gold find in my um, in things like that and my Modron core uh, makes made split the party two uh, easier than split the party one. Uh, I, I do not know uh, if, if, I mean, I think it's going to be a big deal for Split the Party 3, but is it going to be easy? I don't know. We'll find out on Wednesday. Looking forward to it. Iron Mask. So basically, background parties are equivalent to offline mode. They are the same thing. <laughs> they are the same thing. That's why when you switch to them, it says calculating offline progress, just like it does when you turn your game off and you come back. Uh, that, lit, that, that simulation was literally made... Uh, because they were doing background parties and because also they wanted people who play on phones and consoles to have some kind of progress. Because before this, there was none. Before this, if you turned your game off, it just stopped on whatever level you were on. And until you turned it back on again, you didn't make any progress. Uh, so yes, background parties are offline mode. They, they function with that offline mode simulation. Uh, Hertz, oh, I don't remember the answer to this question. But I'm gonna I'm gonna own up to it live on stream. Do skipped areas from Briv count for the XP of the Modron core or only the completed ones? It is my it was my understanding, this was a whole big thing. It is my understanding that the core, when you're looking at how much XP it has earned while you're in the middle of a run, will not ref, will will count it as if it it is only counting your actual completed levels. But then when you complete your run, it will dump in the XP from the jumped levels. That is my understanding. But I, it's honestly, it's been a, it's been a while uh, since I've had to worry about that. But that is, that is my understanding. Um, we, we will find out for sure. I'm sure, I'm sure somebody in the discord knows 100% for sure. Uh, it is not something that I've had to even think about for a very long time. <laughs> uh, so yeah, take that with a grain of salt. That was my understanding of the way it worked. Uh, okay. Do, 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 do. Uh, gray, L-shaped, uh, which of the two cores available without blowing a big chunk of gems is better to go full optimal? So, which should you level up first? If you are just unlocking Split the, if you've unlocked Split the Party 1 and 2, uh, and you have, uh, so you have your modest core and your fast core, which one should you invest your time in to, to maximize first? Because here's the thing, you unlock those pretty quickly... Uh, I remember on the last new player account I did, my, my modest core was only like level three or four by the time I unlocked my fast core, which isn't a huge bonus. Um, I recommend if, if that's what you're talking about, I recommend leveling your fast core first. Uh, the reason is, is the amount of power that you get from a completed fast core, pretty close, pretty close. It's not the same, but it's, it's fairly close to what you're going to get from a completed mo modest core. But you're going to go faster. It's kind of in the name. So not only are you going to level up your core a little, potentially uh, level up your core a little bit faster. Not necessarily like they have a higher XP range. But you're going to get through that. You're going to complete stuff faster. You're going to complete adventures and, and variants and stuff faster, which you're going to like. Um, the speed nodes are at 5, 10, and 15. So just know that there's going to be a little bit of speed. Then a little more speed. Uh, and then finally all the speed. Um, and you're going to be able to push almost as far with that fast core as you would, uh, as you would have with the modest core. Um, so I would level the fast core first, uh, and then follow it up with the modest. Uh, do you know how to reduce your enemy's health is calculated? If you do, could you explain? Uh, I mean, it takes the amount of health. Let's say their health is, uh, well, this is simplistic, but I'm going to do it anyway. Let's say their health is 100, 
and it reduces it 94%. So their health is then, what, six? Right? But here's the thing. This is a, this is a game built on large numbers. Uh, so 94%, uh, at higher levels is like, you know, they have a hundred mil, a hundred, uh, septillion health, and then you're reducing it 94%. Uh, they still have health in the septillions. So it's not like they're just, they fall right over. Uh, so yeah. Uh, it's what what the health reduction is nice. Uh, I mean, it's it's nice, but what it's what it actually we see the most effect on is, uh, in terms of how far you can still click kill, uh, instantly when you're at the start of your runs. That's the, the kind of the most noticeable thing. Uh, you'll be able to click kill further, so your run, your runs will speed up. It's kind of a small speed mechanic for the people who are using, who are leveling up their click damage with familiars on the field, like what I'm doing here. Uh, it just lets you go. It's going to let you go further. Um, you're, you'll, you might notice it a little bit. Uh, not really on the boss levels and stuff. It's more just you're going to get that a little more speed feel in the background or not in the background, but when you're when you're progressing. Uh, I fixed the bug where automated runs break without a reason or work way too slow. I, again, I think I talked about uh, reasons why. You might be seeing problems in the background. Are there also bugs with that? Sure. Uh, you kind of have to figure out which is which. Have they fixed them all? Probably not. Again, this has been something they've been working on for the last couple of years is to try to find all of those. What they need from people, I'm going to say this as somebody who's wor who's worked in the games industry for a while now, uh, what, what, what they need when you run into a bug is they need information. They need more information so that they can track something down. If all you come to them with is, ah, it just stops, it stops for no reason. They have nowhere to even start looking. Uh, make sure you're submitting support tickets when that happens, because that's gonna give them a snapshot of your account. It's gonna let them look at like what your formation was, what adventure it was on, what's going on, and try to delve into that. But if you can find ways to reproduce that uh, and tell them, Exactly. Like I can make it stop. It stops every time here with this formation. That's that's a big deal. That's huge. That gives them something that they can look to actively reproduce and figure out. Hey, is it a champion that's causing this to break? Is it a, is it familiar placement? What's going on? Is it that adventure? Yeah. Um, they're constantly. They're, they've done. They have improved that system uh, a lot. Uh, it's still not perfect, uh, but it's still progress that you wouldn't be getting otherwise. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. If you haven't already, can you show how to build a basic buff box for pipes? I did. I did that sort of. Well, I did the most basic version. Uh, come back in, you know, who knows? Maybe a few weeks. Next week, I will be doing uh, Garowar's next Saturday. I can tell you this already. Next Saturday, because the event is starting, I'll be doing Garowar's Guide to Nordom. And uh, the great the great Modron march, but maybe the week after that, uh, maybe we'll talk about Modron flow again, maybe. Uh, because that that takes a that takes a, I have I can do an entire tutorial just on trying to to teach you how to best pipe the game. <laughs> uh, okay, we did that one. Some of these I did. Hey, yay! Uh, Ilslaski, how long does it take you to get, uh, your Modron core all epic? A while. It's a slow, gradual build. Unless you throw, again, unless you throw cash at the game, uh, which is basically, in this game, it's, it's just pay to progress faster. Uh, it's going to take you a while, mainly because it's going to, it's going to take a while for you to accrue all those, uh, uh, pipes, all of your extra pipes by, by getting them from your patrons each week or, or just getting them as you level up. Um... It's all about the number of pipes you have uh, that are available to you when it comes to getting things uh, full epic. Um, and then also, then you just have to level up your core too, right? Uh, but I find once you once you have the pipes to, to get full epic, even before you're level 15, from that point on, as long as you continue to collect pipes, you should just be able to continue that purple, uh, that purple flow. That worked for me. Like, I think I got all... I think it wasn't until I was... 
somewhere between levels eight and 11 in that range before I actually hit pull full epic flow. And that was simply because I did not have the pieces to get there. I had solid flow in places, but it just wasn't full epic. Um, and then once it did, uh, it stayed that way until it, all the way through 15. Uh, I'm a new player. How do you access this motor on automation? That's what this whole show was about. <laughs> so uh, completing uh, split the party, completing split the party gets you your your first background, your first extra party and your first Modron core. And at that point, uh, then it's just p connecting that automation node activates Modron automation. Uh, Zill, does flow diminish over distance or split when the pipes do? It does not diminish over distance, but whenever you split, whenever you go into a split, like a T or, or, or an X, you know, a T is going to split the flow in half. Uh, and an X piece is if they're all out, uh, one in and three out, uh, that's going to split the flow by a third uh, on, on all of the output. So basic math, it's going to do what you expect it to do. Um, however, if it's a directed pipe and it's a T and it combines, then that's going to multiply the flow, right? That's going to increase the flow. So it just depends on, on what that goes. So it's not, it's not going to diminish over time. You can, you can wrap, if you could wrap over and over and over again, it would stay at one flow. Uh, if you have no multipliers, but once you split it, it's going to, it's going to drop in half. So that's part of the calculations you have to do and why splitting then needs to recombine in some way to really, to make it work. Uh, Zephyrin, are you going to talk about the color of the flow? I didn't because I don't. Eh. Okay. Let's go, let's go look at, let's go look at the color of your flow. Uh, if you'll notice, uh, like right here, I have I have white flow. That means it's it's less than two. It's less than two. Uh, so it's just clear flow, right? Down here you'll see it went blue. Well, what does that mean? Well, again, with these nodes, uh, it means it's going to go up. Like uh, less than two is going to be white. Uh, greater than two, but less than three is going to be green. Uh, greater than three, but less than four is going to be blue, and greater than four is going to be purple. But it will also be light versions of this. So there's a light, there's a light green, there's a dark green, there's a regular green, there's a dark green. So as, as if you're barely into that flow, it's going to be light. Uh, if you're almost to the next flow, it's going to be darker. And it does that with all the colors. Uh, like, see, here we go. Down here, I've got like a super light pale green because it's in the 2.2s. Um, there's like, a, this is a, a super light blue. You can barely even see, but really it just, the number is all that matters. As long as you're over whatever your threshold is, uh, currently that the difference between three and four doesn't get you any more uh, of a bonus at your end point. It's literally a flat cutoff. Um, so I didn't talk about that for that reason, but, but yeah, that is a thing that's just going to let you kind of visually identify uh, to a certain degree what... Uh, what amount your flow, like what level your flow is at. Uh, when it comes to background parties, JL Kroll asks, do speed champions apply to background parties? No, they do not. Currently, uh, currently speed functionalities does not apply in background parties because of the way the simulation runs, uh, because it is a time-based simulation. Uh, everything is kind of flat. The one thing that will work uh, to speed that up is speed potions. If they're running in the background, um, because speed potions speed up the entire game, uh, but speed champions do not function in the background. So if you want to use speed champions currently, you want to do that in your active party. Um, and again, you should have your Modron core in your active party uh, with those speed champions. So you're leveling up your core as fast as possible. Every level you complete gets you one XP. I don't think I mentioned that. Every level that you complete gets you one XP. Grail shaped said XP in the context of this game. What does that mean? Every level that you complete gets you one XP for your Modron core. Currently. Nordom gets you more. Nordom gets you more. Uh... Inipt, uh, I've completely split the party. I have most of my familiars on one of the two groups, but two of them keep getting assigned to level position one and two of my other group, but when I try to unsign them and switch groups, they get put back in that position. It's annoying. Do you know what I'm doing wrong? Are they saved? They might be saved in that formation. 
Again, when you save a formation with familiars in it, it is saving those specific familiars. So whenever it tries, whenever the background party checks the formation and makes sure it's loaded in right, it may be loading those familiars in again. I, I don't know for sure. That would be my first guess. That would be what I would check. How do you get split the party? Uh, zero. Uh, zero limit. Excuse me. Uh, again, split the party uh, will activate. This, this adventuring party's button will show up when you have uh, an extra champion in six slots, but you can't do split the party until you have an extra champion in every slot. So that is why we, we ask you how many how many slots do you have when you're like, what time gate should I run? How many slots do you have uh, two champions in? That's our first kind of question. And then for split the party two, it's three champions in. Split the party three, we're assuming four champions in. Uh, Fibulator, in your speed core, you skip over many nodes. Is there any reason you do that with so many free pipes? Yes. Okay, next question. Oh. <laughs> um, it is it is a specific manipulation of of my core to do what I am doing right here, which is a, a, a high mid to end game manipulation of cores and champions and briv to farm gems in a much faster way than you might do otherwise and automatically cycle through uh it requires manipulation of not just your champions in your formation but their placement it requires a manipulation of their feats and it requires manipulation of the nodes that you have active in your in your speed core to get to work right um, so it's super, it's really complex. If you want more information on that, uh, Zeke, uh, from the discord and the Reddit made a guide for that. Um, you will want to start there. And when I say start there, it's because that's your basic introduction. And then you have to make it work for you. If I were just, if I were just running full speed on my speed core, I would, everything would be active, but because of this specific manipulation, um, I, I do not have them all hooked up on purpose on purpose so it's not that i can't full epic it's just that i don't want to because that would for this specific usage it would get me too much power i nipped how often does the save formation get checked oh i don't know you're gonna have to ask the devs for that i know when you're first starting out it's checking it fairly regularly because it's trying to make sure that it's loading all your champions in uh and putting the familiars in the right place and it does that for a while so I just know that it kind of does that check uh, on occasion, but I don't know when it stops doing that check. You might want to ask on Dev Insights, uh, which is on Thursdays, uh, or uh, on the weekly Reddit Q&A. Uh, they might be able to get you that question. Um, yeah, again, not a developer, so don't know that exact like crunchy detail. I just know that it's that's it has to do these. I know it has to do these checks at the beginning because you may not have enough gold to load everything in. So it needs to regularly check and reload the formation to trigger pulling those champions in. I just don't know how often it does it. Uh, Sir Ock was uh, with Split the Party 3 coming up. Who should be the fourth slot 10 champion for me? I have already have Tyrol, Okori, and Havilar. Um, I would say either Barrowin or Yorvin. I like those two right now. Uh, if you're into evil formations or you want to go crawned at some point, uh, Torgar. So there's some thoughts. There's some thoughts on that. Uh, going back through, I'm hitting all the general questions now, folks. Uh, we've got about a half an hour. I'll definitely be able to get through all of these. Uh, so if you have a question, ask. Um, Shevik. Uh, last chance to get, I'm asking for a list, but not a tier one. Oh, thank God. Uh, the last ones available are Prudence, Lazapt, Corzon, Spurt, Esmeralda, Torgar, Brig, Wolfgar, Black Viper, Sergeant Knox, Puent. So which ones to get first? Uh, Corazon. Right out the gate. You're, you're, we're, we're looking for niche functionality. Corazon has the most destructive ultimate in the game for killing off armored or hit-based enemies. So get you that tool in your tool belt. Uh, uh, you've also got Spurt and Brig in there. I think those are great uh, support options when you need them. Uh, as is Esmeralda. 
Esmeralda has very niche usage. She likes, uh, she hates very specific things, uh, and she gets you extra credit on uh, hit-based things. So, and that's that can help quite a bit. So get Esmeralda in your in your toolkit. Uh, after those, I would then like jump into Lazaps uh, and Wolfgar. Wolfgar is more of a currently. Uh, only if you need a tank in your Azaka farming. Uh, Toragar. Yeah, those three. And then everything else after that. Yeah. Uh, Random Ginger, is there one champion I should go for over others? Uh, it, it depends. So, uh, again, usually when you're starting off, uh, if you don't have two champions in every slot, then... For us to answer that question for you, we need to know what champions you don't have two in yet, or what slots you don't have two in yet, uh, so that we can then give you recommendations for what might be good for you at this point in the game. Uh, but depending on what what you know, how many you have and what you already have, there's that can vary. There isn't just one true answer all the time. Ziegler, if there is time, can you go over Selyse and her specializations and what her ultimate does? So basically, you want me to just talk about Selyse for a while. Uh, so, uh, Selyse is a tank in slot 12. We're going to do this real quick. Uh, Selyse is a tank in slot 12 that basically is, uh, I refer to as our stance stance revolution champion. Because basically her kit revolves around shifting through four different stances, aggressive, wall, deflect, and last resort. Uh, and different things happen based off those. You can read all of this in her, in her, in her kit. Um, and it's all, it's all based on different kinds of buffs or different kinds of survivability methods. Uh, her ultimate is what shifts her through those stances. So it's very low cooldown but there is still a small cooldown. Uh, and when you hit it, it shifts into a new stance and she gets a new icon based on that stance that's hovered over her. So you know what stance she's in. Uh, her specializations affect her basic ability, divine uh, sense in some case, uh, but some things are based off stances. So like Relentless Avenger is when she's in a wall stance. She can't be stunned at all. So that might be important for certain variants. So it's very specific to know what you're running into uh, and to know what you need protection from. Reflective shield means uh, when she's in deflect stance, she deflects projectiles back at the enemies uh, and causing them damage, uh, which means you're not taking damage from uh, projectiles when she's in that stance. Uh, and last resort, another one of her stances, she takes reduced damage, right? Uh, so, you know, I'm just picking one. It's, it's, really, it's really situational. Uh, whatever you didn't choose in that first one around gets added to the second specialization, but it also adds Tears Eyes, which just increases the range her Divine Sense can affect uh, champions in the formation. So again, very situational. If, you've are, if you're already hitting your primary DPS, then you would pick up another uh, functionality effect. But if you're not, you can extend it with Tears Eyes, right? Uh, so, yeah. I mean, that's kind of the quick thing for Selyse. If you want more information on Selyse, uh, like a more in-depth review. Uh, oh, no, I don't remember what event she arrived with. But I've covered her in, in an event guide before, I believe. I'm pretty sure I have. So if you want to go back and find that. I also have written guides on the subreddit. Uh, you can check those out, too. Uh, but, yeah, that's basically her ultimate just shifts her through the stances. Um and uh, her specializations just modify how her stances can work or, or, uh, or how far her ability affects things. Uh, zero Limit, I've uh, been sinking hours and hours into your guys on YouTube these past two weeks. How can I know the best hero per slot based on what I have unlocked? When you're newer, it is really uh, subjective in terms of how, like what quality of gear you have on a champion. And the only way you're really going to figure out which one's best is to get to a wall. So a place where you're, you know, you're having trouble killing stuff and start swapping in different options, building different formations and trying to see what combinations of champions might actually get you further. Um, 
it isn't until you have all your champions roughly equally geared, and by that I mean all in epic gear, uh, that you can then start making just more flat definitive statements about who's going to be best for you in each slot. Are there exceptions to this? Absolutely. Uh, there's an exception like in slot 11, Averin is just incredibly strong, right? And He may just be the best option for you. In slot 4, Baylos, incredibly strong may be the best option for you. There are, there are some exceptions, but really it's going to, uh, for most of the champions, it's going to come down to what your gear is and how that's affecting their power in, in that moment. Uh, and that's just trial and error. That's just trial and error. Taboo Mantis has Garwar covered the dismantled dev release previously. I've missed some shows. Not on a tab, not on a tutorial show because it's not out yet. So if it's not in the game, it, I'm not making a tutorial on it. We talked about it, uh, in a GG2E a couple, uh, well, either a couple weeks ago or this week or something. Um, but I mean, at this point, I, at this point, all I know is what they've put out on the, in the blog post about it. So, and it's pretty straightforward. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward. Uh, they're basically looking to add it. Well, they are, they are building out a dismantle feature, which will let you, when they make a major change to a champion that made, that may, uh, take it in a direction that you don't want to, 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 to go in or don't like, uh, they will then queue up a dismantle option where you basically refund all the item levels and any shinies or epics or legendaries off that potion, off of that champion and give you contracts and potions, uh, in place after that. And then you can, and you could put that somewhere else if you wanted, basically. That's that's basically the gist of what we know right now. Uh, yeah, well, I think it's a great idea. Uh, I, I wish we'd had it a lot sooner, but you know we're at least getting it now, and they're gonna try to get it in the game. Jeez, uh, oh, fibulator! Not all the item levels up to ten thousand. For ninety, I feel like ninety nine percent of this game has fewer than ten thousand item levels on any given champion. I've been playing this game for four and a half years now, uh, and I don't have any champions anywhere near 10,000. So, scripters, sure. Scripters are going to have over 10,000. Uh, maybe some of the early adopters of, of automated Briv farming might have over 10,000, uh, or just Briv and Human uh, farming in general. But uh, the vast majority of the people in this game... Uh, aren't going to be bothered by that 10,000 limit. Uh, Gray, L-shaped, uh, currently running a time gate free play for spurt in the background at the end of which I'll open the chest I earned from the interim missions with a gem farm in the foreground party. Yeah, that's not a question. <laughs> bad, Jay, bad. Uh, yeah, that's an example of what you can do. Uh, absolutely, with your with your formations. I probably should have read that. To in my head before, but then when there'd be all these pauses, I just read it live. I just read it live. Uh, mean Keb, can you please scroll over your Dungeon Mentor Weekend character boss? My only show active for four hours, 23 minutes. I'm going to restart and submit a ticket, but I just want to see it was a me thing. Uh, yeah, it's a you thing. I got, I got two days. And I just realized with that question that I forgot to even talk about those buffs yesterday. Look, folks, I, we were talking about Nordom, and I answered a hundred questions on GG2E yesterday. I think it's okay that I totally forgot to talk about the weekend buffs. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, Jail Krell, if it's best to wait for the strong core until a lot later in the game, where do you recommend spending gems in the mid early part of the game? Chests. Occasionally familiars, but chests. Buy all those chests, folks. If you do not have full epic on all of your core and evergreen champions, then you should be buying lots of gold chests. If you're brand new, you start off with silvers and then you switch to gold, but then you're buying golds for a very long time. I still spend all my gems on gold chests to this day, because guess what gold chests give you? Blacksmithing contracts and bounty contracts, two of the strongest things in the game, right? Because you can you can take those blacksmithing contracts and direct item levels to champions, to event and time gate champions that you want to level up. And you can take those bounty contracts and you can pop them during events to get lots of tokens 
so that in just their initial launch event, you can fully epic out a champion. And then you don't have to run time gates or buy patron chests, right? So those are, I still to this day spend all my gems on chests. But that's, yeah, chests and occasionally familiars. Uh, Bottle Monkey, how do I switch maps so I can do another map? Uh, well, once you've completed an adventure and you're back on the map screen, you just click on the next, click on the next banner and you're at a new map. Is that what you're talking about? Uh, there are some completion requirements because they really, you shouldn't just jump to these. As you go down this list, the campaigns get harder, but that is how you, this is how you switch between all the different maps in the game. Now, if it's this type of map, you just click on this green arrow. Like there are maps inside of maps. Uh, in some cases, you click on the little arrow down here. Uh, if that's not what you're talking about, then I'm going to need a more specific question. But yeah, that's, you just got to get out of your adventure and then hop into another thing. But you want to do them is somewhat in order. I've got a guide for that. Bottled Monkey. That's, that's an, a mental image. How do I keep the adventuring party going and do another map? You would have to have, you would have to have another party. You would have to have another party. Or, or I don't I don't know. Or you just complete your party and then, or complete your adventure and then go to another map, like I just said. So I feel like I don't, I mean, I feel like that's, I feel like that's the answer to your question. I feel like that's the answer to the question. Uh, Jail Crow, how do you acquire the nerds now that the promotion is over? Well, uh, if you don't have the new shop, you don't yet. But once the new shop rolls out, they are in the gem store. So uh, right here, this is the gem icon. Uh, if I didn't already have nerds, they would show up right here, and they cost 100,000 gems. Once the new shop rolls out to everyone, you will be able to buy them there. Renthal, is there a way to delete your save formations without being in their respective campaigns? No. Hate having save formations listed for events that are over. Uh, yes, someone. Yeah, no, you have to wait for that event or or a time gate or whatever. Yeah, you can't just. There is no just overall formation save manager that manages all of them. Uh, Mikey Moo, when I played Split the Party 2, if I switch back to my other party and pick a champion from the Switch, the party, then I can go pick another champion. Is that a glitch? Yes. Yes, that's not. That's not the intended way for that to work. Uh, Jather, can anyone in chat let me know if, if, uh, does everyone get the same three champ options for the free time gate? No. When you have six pieces, do you get to choose from the entire roster or just three randoms again? Anyone from the entire, uh, history of event champions ever when you're doing a, a paid one. When you're paying six pieces, you can pick anything. It's just the natural one that you have to pick from one of those th random three. Uh, and everyone gets roughly, it's always going to be uh, a champion from year one right now, a champion from year two, uh, and then a champion from all one of the other years. Uh, and at least one of those is going to be one that you don't own if you don't own all the champions. So that's the way the rules work. Uh, so it is account specific, so everybody gets somewhat, somewhat unique uh, responses, like uh, uh, options. Jather, is there a level cap to areas, stages, or does it go on infinitely until you cannot get the damage for it? Infinitely. Well, not not technically infinitely, but functionally infinitely. Um, I mean, there's going to be a point where the game just can't calculate everything anymore. But that's functionally. That just means it goes on infinitely for most, for the, the vast majority of people. Uh, Ibor15, where did you get that cool click damage skin from? Uh, this is, oh, which one am I using? Oh, this is the water skin. Uh, this skin is available in the new shop. Uh, the green flame one, green flame, is available by, uh, with a code. You can punch in the code karmic mad jig. I will type it in chat. There you go. Uh, that should still work for the green flame. The snowball was a, uh, promotion. Uh, when they launch, when they announced Icewind Dale, uh, at some point it might be in the new shop. At some point it'll end up in the gem shop. If it's not when the new shop comes out, I don't know. I think it's when the new shop comes out. I don't know because I already have it. And I'm not sure. Karmic Mad Jig finally expired. Wow, that worked forever. Oh man. I'm shocked. That's been that code's been working for years, folks. 
All right. Well, then maybe that one will eventually end up in the shop, too. I don't know. You'll have to ask the devs. Uh, ten minutes, but more than ten questions. Okay, we're going to try to do this real quick. Uh, Jay, I think you could stop picking up questions from chat. Uh, Hufik, uh, can you tell me why some missions are marked as easy, but I can't pass them at all? Uh, because, uh, okay, the difficulty rating in this game uh, out here, uh, when you click on this and it says, uh, and it says easy... This is very much, this is my uh, analogy. It is very much a, you need to be this tall to ride this ride. Uh, that does not mean you're going to enjoy the ride. It just means you have met the preliminary uh, restriction to ride the ride uh, and potentially have an enjoyable experience. It doesn't mean you will. It doesn't mean you will. Sometimes uh, you might be able to do it before that. But what you really need to do is it is it is it is purely based on the amount of favor you have in that campaign. That's it. It is only favor based. So once you meet that minimum threshold, kind of like height, you can you can you know it is it's going to show as easy. But you need to learn to read the restriction and understand what problems you are facing in that adventure to know if it's something you can do or not. Uh, zero limit. Are there any core champions I should look to replace quickly or not waste my time with at all? Uh, the very first thing you want to do in this game is uh, open up the menu and sign up for the newsletter. Uh, and that will get you hitch so that you don't have to use Delana. <laughs> but I, but you know, that's kind of the, that's, that's, yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Core champions should never be the, 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 the I'm always going to use these forever champions. That's what they're trying to get away from. Uh, that was kind of a problem with Ashara. I think it's still a problem a bit with Tyrrell. Um, but yeah, ultimately you want to have op you want to have other options to use because like the first one you should look to replace is Jarlaxle, in my opinion. But that may not be how things work out. Uh, the throw, will both parties advance with offline play? Uh, I mean, as long as you meet, as long as you're, as long as you have a party that's going to progress, yes. They, they, they're, they're, Regardless of how many parties you have, as long as they're, it's just like setting up an active party. As long as you've set it up to progress, it's going to progress. Uh, barring a bug, Gunner, your Gunner Jurgen, what are the benefits of leveling your party beyond points, the point where they get abilities, like you do right now? Uh, it adds a little more damage per level, not a lot, but a little more. If you can really overlevel them, then it matters on your. Uh, on your DPS, but otherwise it doesn't. Though the, the reason I have it on X100 here is a whole different thing that has specifically to do with what I'm trying to do here. But uh, otherwise, you know, it wouldn't wouldn't bother. Normally, I recommend just keeping it on upgrade. Uh, Gregarious, on the Modest Core, there's an upgrade mode button in the bottom left-hand corner. What does this button do? Oh, I didn't talk about that because currently it doesn't matter. <laughs> There are these things called component pieces. You can actually uh, disassemble pipes uh, and turn them into component pieces. Please don't do this. Please don't disassemble your pipes. If I didn't make it clear earlier, pipes that having lots of pipes is important. Having lots and lots and lots of pipes is important. Please, if you're new, don't don't dismantle your pipes. Um. However, this is an upgrade mode. You can upgrade a pipe that is white, green, or blue up to the next level. It costs component pieces. It will tell you what it upgrades to. As you can see here, uh, it's very specific about what it'll upgrade to, but you can spend components uh, pieces to do that. I just don't recommend it early on at all. At all. At all. Mika14, what would be a good fourth champ in slot five and eight? Fourth? I don't know what your... Uh, here's the thing. I'm not going to be able to answer that question, Mika, because you didn't tell me what your other champions uh, are. If you've already got three champions in each slot, I can't answer that question without knowing what those are. And we're out of time. But somebody in chat may have helped. If not, ask in the Discord. Uh, Bottle Monkey, is it good to keep the game, keep running the time gate free play for any reason or just move off uh, on to other things? Once you've gotten all three of your gold chests, uh, feel free to bounce. Just don't do it before that at least get all three of those chests uh brian uh when does nordum go into the game wednesday zephyron uh have you have done have you thought dungeon master could be your champion no dungeon master is from the 80s cartoons that is not my uh that's not my champion that is, they, they come from, that comes from a, a canon, well, not canon, but that was a cartoon in the 80s. I am, I was alive in the 80s, but that does not make, uh, 
that 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 look was around long before uh before I looked like this. Uh, Mayfields, does the fast core cost five hundred thousand gems like scrum? No, the fast core is free for doing split the party two. The strong core is the only one you have to buy. Pork belly, I've almost unlocked El Cori, and I noticed that uh, Baldur's Gate descent into Avernus is still red, uh, as there is no favor to farm there yet. Oh yeah, what is this checking to confirm if I'm ready to go? Yeah, again. Uh, those difficulty ratings are based off uh, the amount of favor you have in the campaign. So until you dive into Baldur's Gate, it's not going to change. That means it is telling you, it is telling you that Baldur's Gate Descend into Avernus is a difficult campaign. And it is. It's a, it's a hard campaign. It is the first of the hard campaigns. Icewind Dale does the same thing. Wild Man the Witchlight does the same thing. They are hard campaigns. So uh, you will be able to go in and get and complete that first adventure. It's just not going to be a cakewalk. Uh, and then you're going to have to earn lots of favor. And it's going to be hard to earn to pick up blessings there, too. Uh, last question, JL Crow. How is Hearts of Neutrality useful if I can't use neutral champions in Mert missions? Because this is a global blessing or global perk. So there are local perks. I was like, where is this? There are local perks that are only for only apply when you're doing Mert stuff. And there are global perks that apply everywhere. Hearts of Neutrality buffs the damage of neutral champions. Even when Mert isn't your patron. This is just something you earn. These are the global bonuses are the ones that you take with you everywhere. Not just Mert stuff. So that's why it exists. That is all. We have 51 questions today, folks, plus all of our talk. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty deep. Pretty good. Uh, so remember, Wednesday, Nordom arrives with the return of the Great Modron March, bringing with them uh, the return of Mahen and Jahira. So th uh, three champions to be able to pick up on Wednesday. Along with that, the developers were like, hey, why not also uh, add a magic core to the game? Uh, and another background party all unlocked through a new split the party that you have to complete. So you've got that to look forward to on Wednesday. Plus, uh, if you if you if you haven't noticed, because they don't tell you when they put things in the change log, uh, they've been doing champion balance updates weekly for the last three weeks. We should probably have a champion balance update next week at some point, probably Tuesday. So this coming week, very lots of things, very lots of things. Uh, there's, they also teased a new Penelope half pint skin where she's in a Modron costume. Oh my God. So, uh, yeah, lots of stuff coming. Uh, that's going to be the end of the tutorial show. If you want to hang out with me later today for a while, I'll be playing the Vigi games over on my channel. You can find it right down there. Twitch TV slash Garwar spelled like it sounds. Uh, otherwise, uh, CNE games will return on Monday, uh, with the uh, weekly patronage. Uh, but I'd also stream on my channel a lot. Come hang out with me if you want. Uh, I stream, uh, Idle Champions on Mondays, a show called Idle Chatter, where most of the time we're doing like high end patron variants, but you can ask questions. You can ask questions of me there as well about any and all kinds of things. Uh, we're going to go out with, uh, <laughs> I think this is a Jarlaxle song, The Secret Lord of Luskin, uh, because this is the song that uh, that uh, that coined the term, coined uh, what I've been trying to make a mascot for Bardic Inspiration Forever, Sordle the Bard, from one of the lines uh, I played Sordle in uh, a D and D campaign uh, last last week, uh, Sean's birthday campaign or, or one shot I should say, uh, and had a blast. So we're gonna listen to Jarlaxle's song on the way out. Thanks for coming, everybody. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. And his ostentatious hat His wardrobe is in purple And he moves sly like a cat Never-ending daggers And the charisma to match His bracelets sometimes jangle And his boots make quite the noise A wand that sticks you in your tracks Is one of many toys There's seemingly no end to all the tricks That he employs He's the secret Lord Alaskan In your side is Pearl the Thrusting Better hope that you've got a tough skin So beware any fool who trusts him He's the king
king of misdirection, he's a proud iconoclast. He's a brand manipulator and his resources are vast. He's a mercenary captain with a small sky to the mast. He's a master of disaster from men's overbearing land. He pulls off threads of intrigue better than a crown matron. He says he's just a businessman, but that's his biggest con. He's a freak. 